seashells, seashells on the seashore. Seashells, seashells on the seashore. <laughs> It's a Sunday afternoon, and we're recording this on a Sunday afternoon. Life can be tough, especially when you have those annoying customers in the charity shops haggling you for low prices. They're already low enough! Stop it! But thankfully, we can suppress and then release this anger in video games. Specifically, the beat-em-up genre. Oh, yes. So, join us as we count down our top five beat-em-up games of all time. Roll on the fishes! Ladies <laughs> get coming to watch the screen! What happens when you get sent back in time? Well, you fight your way back, of course, as fighting is the only option. Especially if it's a video game. Turtles in Time was a quirky adventure, with the turtles getting sent through different points in time and battling it out with different types of enemies, even ones from the movies. This includes Dr. Razor and Calflax. It was a fun game that would have you playing along with up to four players, or eight. Turtles in Time can be challenging. So challenging that it will have you on your knees and begging for a super guide. Many times we would often give ourselves extra lives as we are useless and unfit to progress through the game in the traditional manner. In fact, if you play Turtles in Time in Turtles 3, you just press the circle button, you get more lives. You just press circle and it goes, Let's get down! And just like him, we press the button Let's ultra fast. Get Combos are limited, but you'll find yourself laughing like crazy when throwing those enemies at the screen. I'll be careful though, throw them too hard, and sometimes they can fly into your room. Whoa! Turtles in Time is a blast to play, and we recommend it. All should play it. All, All shall play it. it. All, All shall play it. it. Are you full of rage and want to smack people's skulls in? If you are, you should probably get some help. What? You didn't tell me that. I love smacking people's skulls in. In the meantime, you should play Streets of Rage 2. Streets of Rage 2 is one of those better than the original games, making the first one look as much fun as soap on a rope. Oh, I love playing soap on a rope. I always manage to finish eating it within six minutes. Wait, you eat soap? Yes. What does it taste like? Chemicals, I assume. It tastes like lemon curd. Streets of Rage 2 is one of the best Mega Drive titles filled with nice visuals, addictive soundtrack, and easy to play controls. The one thing that does get annoying though, is when you would hit each other accidentally. Yes, accidentally. <laughs> Just like the turtles, you had a limited moveset, but it makes up for it in items you can use. Like baseball bats and poles, or... Chicken. There's no chicken you can pick up in the game. It was also quite lengthy for a beat-em-up, maybe that's because it was difficult. But with a buddy by your side, you could zoom through it like a Jedi. You a rabbit? <laughs> ah, Maximum Carnage. I do have a confession to make. I used to be scared of Carnage on the cover. I found him more scary than the talking toilet at my friend's house. I got it with you. Ah. You better give me that baby. Ah. You knew the game was gonna be epic, because not only did you have Spider-Man team up with the Venom, <laughs> the Venom, the Venom, <laughs> the Venom, he's so powerful, the Venom, but the opening title screen music was a banger, yeah! Until Spider-Man PS4 arrived, Maximum Carnage was probably the best Spider-Man game you could find. While he's had many titles on all systems, like the gorgeous... PlayStation, oh yeah. All right, calm down. But none captured the aesthetics of the comics like this. Like it had comic book cutscenes that told the story. Just, just look at it. Look at it, Dexter. Look at it. Look at oh. it. I mean, personally, I, I know you say this is the best Spider-Man game, but truth is, I think that the, the other Mega Drive Spider-Man game in versus, versus the, the Kingpin. Kingpin. No. Yeah, but you, you have to take photographs for the Daily Bugle. You get to. But web none swing. captured the aesthetics of the comic books. Yeah, I know, but, other than this. but not that made you feel more like Spider-Man. No, this felt like more like the comic books. Okay, well, let's just agree to disagree, and then let's take it outside again. The gameplay itself was like John Goodman. Funny, tough, and all around just awesome. You could use your web to pull enemies close and throw them around, do some crazy kicks, and even wall climb. There's a bit where you get to web swing and climb walls. Isn't that cool? I mean, what other game allowed you to do this? Apart from Spider-Man games, yeah. of course. 
The game was filled with much variety. You would battle different types of enemies to help it stay fresh, such as the Dooblaganger Spider-Man, who reminded me of your cousin Phil. Yes, that's because they both have six arms. There's also that annoying robot thing in the Fantastic Four lab, which is the point where we always lost in the game. We always it? died, yes. I think we always died, or if we did get past it, we died on the rooftop a bit shortly oh, afterwards. Oh, rooftop too. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, it is, it's still a fantastic game. The tunes are rocking, the gameplay is killer. It's a great Spider-Man game, it's just a great game period and it will keep you coming back for more like today we still play it yeah oh, well whenever we get the mega drive out which is uh, rare <laughs> River City Girls, why am I not surprised? River City Girls is one of the best beat em up games in years. Great co op, mm. fun combos, delightful characters, and awesome 80s like soundtrack. I agree, this game is, is terrific. I think one of the highlights for me is the ability to recruit some of the enemies you faced and have them help you out later in the game. For example, we have the Arnold Bots, who are like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Sadly, the Arnold Bots led to a huge court case as Arnold Schwarzenegger was offended that they used his grunt noises and likeness without permission. He sued way forward the developers and went off to sell their IPs at an auction for punishment. Thank you for coming for today's auction. The first item for bid is the Shanty IP from Way Forward, a very popular series because of the boobies. And the starting bid is $20. Any more bids? $25, $26, $27, $28, $29. Any more bids? $32, no dollars. $42, $58. Any more bids? $58, $85, $61. Any more dollars here? $87, $90, $92. $94, sold for $94. In all seriousness, River City Girls kept us highly engaged with its fantastic variety and great gameplay. We found ourselves acing the whole thing, such as finding the lost cats, eating all the foods, buying all the moves, and breaking all those statues that remind me of Yuji Naka. The game, in some ways, is almost a mixture of all the previous beat-em-ups we have mentioned. It has the vibes of Turtles, the style of Streets of Rage, and the comic book cutscenes of Maximum Carnage. Put them all together and what do you get? <laughs> you get <laughs> In short, this game is so good, it will have you screaming at the world with joy. Another Castle Crashes! Castle Crashes is one of those games that comes crashing through your wall to get your attention. Like a cow being flipped upside down. Mm -hmm. Castle Crashes contained tons of wacky action, quirky items, and funny situations that threw you off guard. You never knew what was going to happen next. Remember that time you get the princess and one of them ended up being a clown? Oh yeah. You had to start playing after that, remember? Yes. It had a nice assortment of combos and lots of interesting unlockable characters like Bear Grylls and Keanu Reeves. The game had an amazing four-player co-op, interesting flash art style, and tons of collectibles to keep you busy to the next pandemic. Its soundtrack was also quite inspiring, causing you to run to a gym and exercise. I love to sing this music quite often, especially in my sleep. Just stop it. And there you have it, our top five picks. Hope you enjoyed it and look forward to our next video as we- Wait, you forgot to include Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I shall add it. Here we go. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim is the best beat-em-up ever made, hands down. It was the first game to create the beat-em-up genre too. What? No, that's lies. Stop it. Look, you can't just overturn our number one pick, okay? You're ruining the video. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Watch can. me do it. I've already I'm started. I'm in charge here. I've already started. I'm in charge So here. anyway, the game okay, had everything from- Okay, it's not a trivial script. You can't just do this. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. Thanks, Honest Review. Put him in the closet. No, no, quit. End the video before you- Ah! Oh, it bit my finger! Okay, I'm gonna stop the video! Yeah. Thanks for watching. Work. We'll see you next week. Hopefully, guys, it's in the complete history. Work.